Will the Chiefs defense continue their role? Will Gus Bradley give Patrick Mahomes what he's looking for? We're going to give you matchups, keys, our goals to go, and finally, our predictions for Chiefs versus Raiders coming up here on Locked On Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked On Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, Chiefs Kingdom. Thanks for making us your first listen. We're brought to you today by On Locations. That's On Locations EXP. Dot com slash SB56 for a unique experience. You can go check that out. You'll hear more about that later in the show. This is Red Friday. Welcome to it. How you doing, Chris? Much better than I was. Uh, I'm still not over my cold, not over my cough. So if I cough, I apologize ahead of time. But I uh, feel a lot better than I have been. Well, that's good. It goes so, a long way. It does. <laughs> and we should be feeling good about where this team's at. And, and really, we'll just start off in general. Not a ton of, of issues on the uh, injury report i'm feeling pretty optimistic about that did you see anything that stood out to you no i still have questions whether or not they're going to have fitton and niang we won't know until game time doesn't look like they'll have Lamon, so maybe they bring up uh what is it jc jackson from the or possibly so, yeah somebody josh jackson i'm sorry from the practice squad um so we'll see how that ends up i do not think that kyle long is going to be active this game yeah, I don't think so either. Um, and mm. Fenton and Yang limited. I don't expect to see them. Like kind of status quo from last week is how I feel. That's kind of how I am looking at it myself. You know, on the other side, it, there's a, a number of guys who aren't participating in practice for the Raiders. Obviously still uh, NASA. Um, Perriman didn't practice. That might come in. Neither did Ngakwe. So I, I found that interesting. I expect they're going to play. But as I understand, Darren Waller will not. I think that's probably the biggest missing link for uh the the las vegas raiders las vegas yeah no it vegas. absolutely yeah it is absolutely the biggest link lost link on their side uh and q doesn't think they're going to play we talked to him yesterday uh he also doesn't think that denzel perriman will play so that's probably going to be uh something to look for so this raiders team is going to be struggling to go up against the chiefs unit that is going to be uh hopefully uh what's the right word for it um ready i guess or focused on this game yeah. huge game in the AFC West if they win this game they get a be much better chance to lock up the AFC West and you know they lost their change of pace back Kenyon Drake went to IR this yeah. week and without Waller you know that comes back to can this defense continue to put up these these great totals keeping teams <laughs> under 14 points like they started with the Raiders uh, last time they met I have to feel like that's pretty likely in this situation do you agree or do you think that they might slip and, and let a few more points go up on the board? No, I think I agree with you. I do think that they're going to be very good this game. I think the other thing that really is going to not play into the Raiders' hands in this game is that Derek Carr has struggled in December. I don't think he's a good cold weather quarterback. We'll see if the weather is going to play into things on Sunday. Uh, but I do think that that could be something that is going to cause him some issues. And Steve Spagnuolo has really had his number at times as well. So I think that that's going to play into it as well. Yeah, I think so as well. You know, especially as we get the weather report, like there's snow moving into Colorado right now. So you'll need Kansas City in a day or two. Uh, I'm going to have to revise my earlier prediction. If you guys heard me on the uh, diehard dialogue with uh, Gary Vanacek, I'm going to change that a little bit. You'll have to wait for the end of the show for that one. But going into it, it's, it's about, I think, First and foremost, we'll talk about Mahomes and some of the goals to go here coming up in the second segment. But it's about that defense and the continuity because I think they have to build here. This is an opportunity, obviously not just to give another AFC West opponent a loss, but to build on what you've been doing the last five weeks and take it to the next step. Yeah, and I think the bigger thing for me is that I'm not going to say Andy Reid isn't friends with Versace, but he was friends with Gruden. And I'm not going to say that really changes the way he coaches necessarily. But they need to run up the score against the Raiders. They need to make it show. They may need to make it known who the team is in the AFC to beat, and it should be Kansas City. Uh, yes, New England is playing very well, and we'll get into that later on because I think Kansas City will end up playing New England in the playoffs. Uh, but that's a whole other ball game, and it's way down the line. And you got to throw more than three passes, so I ain't too worried. We're going to be okay. Yeah, and I still can't believe three passes, and they still won the game. I mean, I know it's terrible weather and all that, but for the love of all that's good and holy, throw the ball a little bit more. I, and how many? Now, now wait a second. Wait a second. You're that. the one saying it. <laughs> that's the thing that's I, throwing me off. 
we'll we'll get to the um, warranted or unwarranted Mac Jones hype another day. But this is clearly what I think has to happen is the dissection of Derek Carr. We have to make this very clear as to how we feel it's going to go. And the Chiefs do too. The Chiefs have to say, listen, enough messing around. We know you started the season fine. But at the end of the day, Derek, we're going to take you apart because we own this division. This is going to go a long way towards that, in my opinion. Yeah, and this is the Chiefs division. It has been the- – <laughs> and there's my cough, sorry. Right. This it has happens. been the Chiefs division for the past five years. I think that this is – they're well on their way to their sixth. Uh, and, you know, I talked about this with Q. I've talked about it on online, on Twitter. I do think that this offense is just a couple of steps away from being able to get back to where they were to start the season with scoring points. And then you put in where this defense is, and I think it can take this team to a whole new level. So I think there's a lot to be excited about, and I think we're going to see a lot better team hopefully coming over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but I do want to tell you about our friends over at On Location. Super Bowl 56 at SoFi is less than 100 days away, and On Location, the official hospitality partner of the NFL, is the only place to score a once-in-a-lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. Select your exact seats and choose from elite experiences featuring an exclusive pregame celebration with NFL legends, five-star L.A. hotels, and food by the great Wolfgang Puck. Visit onlocationexp.com slash Super Bowl 56, sorry, SB 56, for more information or search for Super Bowl on location. That's onlocationexp.com slash SB 56, or search Super Bowl on location. It does sound like quite the experience uh, being able to go do some pregame with some NFL legends. And LA is going to really be putting on quite the show uh, with this Super Bowl. Now, I can't, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about our buddies over at Built Bar. Yeah, there you go. I can hear it. I can hear it right there. <laughs> this holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. Built Bar, filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. So many flavors. I don't know what your favorite is. Is it still the coconut brownie chunk? Oh, yeah. These, okay. these are them right here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I'm still wanting them to come back out with the cookie dough. They need to come back out with the cookie dough. It's a fantastic bar. Uh, they have so many different flavors. Cherry Barcia, mint brownie, raspberry, double chocolate, cookies and cream, peanut butter brownie. They have so many. You need to go give them a try if you haven't already. Bill Bar gives you that extra fuel you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all the holiday shoppers. This is the time of year where people are getting out and they are shopping like crazy trying to get ready for Christmas. Want to cozy up to something warm? Here's a holiday secret. Dip your Bilt Bar into a piping hot cup of cocoa, let it melt a little, and give your beverage a bit of that Bilt Bar, Bilt Bar flavor, plus you'll have a nice melty Bilt Bar to go with it. Be sure to have a couple of napkins on hand. Absolutely. That does sound delicious, though. I will admit that. Go to build.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at build.com. And the new one hit today. I already got the email. <laughs> Eggnog built bars. Oh, I was so <laughs> tempted. I saw it and I was just like, oh, man. I just, I have so many. I have like eight boxes of built bars. So I'm good for now. I'm trying to. Trying to not go that way, although I really make, want to. You're going to make it through. <laughs> yep, I'll be fine. Well, folks, this this is the second meeting this season. It's funny how close these two games are against the Raiders. We're going to give you our goals to go. What do they need to do to get this job done? And I think specifically for this game, what they need to do to, to make sure that it's in convincing fashion. I think you already touched on one of them, but where would you like to start? You know, it's really hard for me to figure out where I really want to start on this because – to me, Kansas City and the Raiders shouldn't be a close game. Uh, they're headed in completely different directions. Kansas City's won five. Uh, I think that this will make six. I'm going to give you that much of my prediction at this point already. Um, and the Raiders just keep losing games. They've lost their best playmaker on offense uh, because Darren Waller isn't going to be there. Josh Jacobs hasn't been running the ball well. So there's a lot of different things to watch for. My key, though, is going to be to see – when Patrick Mahomes went and played in Las Vegas, what you saw was a guy that didn't get sacked, threw for 400 yards and five touchdowns. 
My key for this game is for the offensive line to do the exact same thing they did to the Raiders the last time, show that they have the ability to protect Mahomes, and that's going to build on this game going forward. So I expect less than two sacks. Wow. Okay. It's funny. I was going to mention specifically Wiley as one of my goals um, yep. because need an encore from him, right? He yep, did a absolutely. great job against Max Crosby the first time. We have to see that again. He has to be able to contribute that consistently. And this actually calls into question like how it's going to be the rest of the season as well because we saw this last season. He got to play against the New Orleans Saints, put in a great performance, and then obviously struggled in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl in particular. So like, I need to see the consistency. If they do that, it will allow them to put up the kind of points where they can get back into the threes, that they can kind of keep smashing away. And I think that's going to be key for Andy Reid as well, because whether it's the Gruden thing or whatever happened last time, it's the best they've looked on offense is against this team. They need to make sure that they have a repeat performance. Yeah, and I have to wonder how much of this playing at home versus playing away really plays into things. It's just so weird to see Mahomes struggle at home like he has this season so far. And now you have a situation where you're going to be playing a team that you've already played away and you're going to be playing them at home. First time that they, he's done that this season. So we'll see if there's any similarities. Uh, obviously, a lot of that also could be the way Gress Bradley called the defense. So really curious to see if Bradley goes to too high. Uh, you know, that's one of the things we talked about on the crossover. Is Bradley going to learn from his mistakes from last time? Because – it does sound like they could get Trayvon Mullen back this week, which would be a boon for their defense, but I still don't think that's going to be enough to slow this def this offense down. Yeah, maybe a boost rather than a boon. I don't know how that is a big game changer in this one, but I don't know. For, Compared for me, to their other corners, Trayvon Mullen is a lot better than who they have replacing him right now. Yeah, no, I hear you. Like I said, a boost. I don't think that changes the, the overall – output of that defense no and outputs what i need to see on the other side my my other goal to to go here is that we have to see continued exertion and forcefulness in changing the way the pocket is addressed by two guys in jaron reed and melvin ingram we know what chris jones can do we know that frank clark's going to be there maybe not flushing the quarterback but cleaning up when he's flushed at least he should be good for pressures and probably a sack. So it's up to the other two guys. If they can keep all four of those guys producing, <clears throat> they should be all over Derek Carr all day, and that will lead to good things. Yeah, and that offensive line is not that good, so that should really be really helping them in that scenario. You know, I'm just going to add a little bonus one here. It's what defense shows up for Kansas City, and, and I don't mean that by they've been playing really good defense for the past couple of weeks, and I get that. But is their run defense going to come back this week? Because obviously Javante Williams is a whole different animal, and he's a, he's going to be a fantastic running back in the NFL. I fully believe that. But they struggled last week. If they can keep Josh Jacobs under 75 yards, the Raiders I don't think have a chance because yeah. they're not going to be able to throw the ball against the secondary. Not to the extent that, not to that extent at least. <clears throat> I, I think Jacobs is probably the key to just to get car in rhythm, just to be able to move yeah. the ball. I mean, I know there's Renfro and he's going to be able to do some things. That's fine. Um, I do like Brian Edwards, so that does make some sense. But I agree with you. They got to try to get him going. And if the Chiefs can respond to that, it's going to be a pretty short day for that offense. And if you want something short, you know, I've been hearing a lot about this stance apparel stuff lately, and they have some short socks that look kind of interesting to me. Uh, make things a little bit easier for him. As they get close to holiday time, you know, it, it's a gift that you can give that I think people might find pretty cool. So you can check them out and they have all kinds of designs like Wu-Tang Clan and Batman of all things, the Goonies. I don't, why are people reviving all these 80s movies things? I have no idea, but it makes me feel old. It's fine. You know, let's get into like the Bob Marley stuff. Okay. Like I kind of, that's fine with me. I don't see how that makes you feel old considering, you know, you're a child of like the seventies, but Hey. Bell bottoms were a thing, dude. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but stance apparel is an item that, that you can wear and, and that you will like probably more than anything else that you wear. It's soft and it, and it feels really comfortable. And that's kind of what they're making their brand on. I think it's worth you guys checking out. Um, and maybe I might go for something Star Wars-ish. I don't know. I'll have to check them out. But stance believes the perfect fit matters what you're fitting in and that those who feel good do good. 
So go see for yourself. All you got to do is go register for an account at stance.com, get 15% off of your first purchase. You got to use the promo code locked on. You guys have heard that one before. We try to apply it everywhere. So you don't have to remember different codes, but that should help. And you apply that at checkout and you should get what you're looking for at a nice 15% off. Enjoy the color and the comfort of a life less ordinary with stance. Less ordinary. That's always what I'm trying for. Um, Key matches. We're going to give you a couple of those. We're going to give you our predictions. I hope you guys are ready. We'd like to hear yours as well. So if you're not subbed on the YouTube channel, go ahead and do that now. Like, sub, and hit that bell notification. Uh, and we'd like to hear your comments as well. As we go through ours, let us know what you think. Uh, first key to victory for me is make sure that something happens on pace beyond the first 15. You have to extend that. And I don't care whether that means you, you extend the script or that the staff, whoever's calling the plays, and we don't know who that's going to be yet, and Patrick are on the same card, and they're still doing the same things. They're not searching for plays downfield. They're not searching for what they're going to go to next. I want rhythm. I want execution. I think that will help the entire offense. And I agree with you. I, I, I'm really curious because I don't think they've ever come out and said who's calling the place. I think that it's, it looks like Eric B. and me is calling the place, but for all we know, it could be Andy Reid, and B. and is just calling them in to Mahomes. I mean, we just don't know. The thing that really, and this is what I go back to, I went and we watched, we the rewatched the the game the other day, and the thing that stood out to me was play calling did change a bit. Mm -hmm. You have to stay with what is working, and for some reason they seem to go and do things that just don't make sense. You don't go go put Williams do an outside run to the short side of the field. You, that's not his strength. That's not. You know, especially the right side where, you know, Wiley is doing okay, but he's not Orlando Brown. So use your team as they are set up to be used, and I think you'll be in a much better position. Uh, you know, my key and my matchup that I'm really going to be watching for is when you look at the defensive side of the ball for the Chiefs, you know, Fenton, <clears throat> it sounds like, should be able to go this week. Uh, the question is, well, maybe he'll be available. Maybe he won't. We don't know. Um, but the other corners, is Baker going to continue to play? Is Mike Hughes going to continue to play? Who's going to be that corner? I want to see this unit continue to thrive when the ball is thrown. Uh, we have th Kansas City has three corners right now that are allowing less than uh, a 70 grade when it comes to PFF. And, you know, that's pretty good. So I'm really excited about that. I do think that this corner group is underrated. Uh, and I do think that it's, it's something that needs to be watched for this week. Yeah, for certain. <clears throat> I need to see them take a step up, and that kind of ties into to my last one as well. And, folks, I just noticed something. Like, I just want to say this out loud. He is Chris Clark. My name is Ryan. I know our, our names are switched on the, the board here. We're going to fix that in a second. But that ties right into the safety play because we saw safety There's play. that hey, better? Look at that. It's like it's like I sound like myself. Um, we My saw bad. the safety play. No worries. We saw the uh, the safety play really stand out last week, obviously, mm -hmm. with the, the pickoffs. And I, I'm i glad that it paid off in interceptions. That is the overall goal. But even just take not takeaways, but PBUs. I have to see more of that. Tyron Matthews kind of overdue, in my opinion. I'd love to see he and Juan Thornhill kind of put something together and really make a statement, not just that, hey, we can do this once in a while, but that, hey, this is us. We own the back. And I, I think if they can make that statement, I think that helps them going forward, not only through the end of the season, against teams like the Chargers. And you're going to see the Broncos again with some of their receivers. Or you're not, and you're going to see other receivers. One way or the other, I think setting that standard allows you to then put things on film that can intimidate people for the postseason. I think that's what it's all going to come down to. I like that. I think that's a good that's a good key for this game. You know, when it comes to this offense and it comes to rhythm, I want to see the guys step up that have kind of been in the background over the past couple of weeks. We've been clamoring and clamoring and clamoring. Get Josh Gordon involved. I would love to see Josh Gordon get involved. I'm just starting to believe it's not going to get there. They don't seem to – they seem to be backing off on a snaps, and maybe that was opponent-based, which doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. I just want to see the complimentary guys – Take a step forward. Demarcus Robinson looked good in those two receptions last week. Byron Pringle had a couple of drops. That that's going to hurt. Can Noah Gray step forward and do something? 
how much does this offense hurt miss a guy like Jody Fortson? Mm. And I, I know there's going to be people out there that are calling me crazy, but he opened things up for this offense. And they don't have a guy that can do that right now, and that's a problem. And is McCole Hardman going to get more involved? I, I think that there's a lot of things that he can do, but are they going to be doing them on offense anymore? Uh, one of the things that he's best at is is being in motion and doing those types of routes, and maybe that's just not the forte and what they want to focus on on offense anymore. Maybe they're trying to adapt, <clears throat> but they have to get guys to step forward. And I'll take it a step further on that. Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill, you have to have a better game than you had last week. Yeah, Can't have two or three drops each. But Eric Bieniemy is talking about drops. <clears throat> In a public press conference, you know something serious. So I'm I'm guessing they're working on it, and I agree with you. Uh, one thing on McColl, he has had some big plays against this team in the past, so mm-hmm. maybe this could get him back on track. I think we're going to find out. It's on to predictions, folks. We'd like to know what yours are. You can leave those in the comments here on YouTube or over in the iTunes reviews. We do appreciate those as well. You want to start or you want me to go first? Go ahead. I am not only confident that they'll win this, I'm awful confident that they won't win it by as much as we want them to because, mm-hmm. like last week, I felt they took their foot off the gas on purpose and they were very much comfortable there. Now, I can't tell whether this was an Andy Reid um, grudge against the Raiders for what happened with Gruden or something else that drove a 40-plus point output last time. I know it was, it was about 35 on, on offense, but still, like I don't know if that's sustainable. So I'm guessing it, they don't quite hit that kind of output, and it is a little bit more uh, meager in terms of the total output. So um, like I said, I'm going to revise a little bit from what I told Gary this morning, but I think that at the end of the day, Chiefs, you see this as a way to get on a roll. I think that they do. Um, I, I think they take care of business without being you know, really, really putting the hammer down. So I'm going to call it 28-14. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to say 27 and I think Kansas City wins this game, but I don't know that the Raiders score 14. Mm. I'm not so sure they score more than <clears> – <throat> Kansas City hasn't led a team over 10 points other than the Raiders since the Giants game. And I have a feeling that they're going to be fired up to do the same thing to the Las Vegas Raiders. So it would not shock me to see this game 27 to 9, 27 to 10. Uh, somewhere in that range, keep them down at, at that level, uh, especially without Darren Waller. That's really going to hurt their offense. So I do think Kansas City wins this game, uh, and I don't expect it to be close. But it might be a little closer than the scoreboard really lets on because Kansas City could dominate the game and just not score the points, kind of like they have in the past. Yeah, we're going to have to <clears> see <throat> again. Let us know what you think. We are eager to see your opinion. You can hit us at Locked On Chiefs on Twitter as well. Hope that you guys are ready for this. We will have post game for you. Uh, relatively shortly afterwards. Uh, I can't give you a guaranteed time, but you'll see that Sunday evening at the very latest. So thank you for listening to us today. Hope you enjoy your weekend, and we'll talk to you then.